All right, so this is just a quick overview here of some basic roster rules um, for MLB and out of the park baseball um, that sometimes people have questions about with the game. Um, and I know I myself, when I started playing this game many years ago, kind of learned some roster rules through playing out of the park. And as always, I'd say the out of the park manual is a great resource for this stuff for a lot of nuance, but this is just kind of a quick overview of a few of the basic roster rules that you're gonna wanna have a hold on if you're um, managing a team. This is just uh, a current sim that I'm doing with the Orioles. This is the rosters and transaction page you're going to want to go to. And you can display a whole bunch of different rosters. But um, for this, you're going to want to look at a 26-man roster and the 40-man roster. 26-man um, is your active roster. And it has to come from players that are on your 40-man. If a player is on your 40-man and not on your 26, he might be on the disabled list. Or, um, I'm sorry, um, Injured list, right? Yeah, injured list, sorry. Um, so, but players who aren't on your injured list are on the 26 men are in the minor leagues. Um, in order to be able to send a player um, to the minor leagues, there are a couple ways. The main way is the player has to have an option year. So, um, say it is spring training and you're looking to get your roster down to the 26 man opening day roster. Um, let's take, for example, Yusnel Diaz here. You go to his contract and it'll say, um, minor league options, two option years left. Um, so this means that Diaz can be sent to the minors, um, will stay on the 40-man roster, but will come off the 26-man roster. Um, you, and so the way an option year works is, say say I were to send him down now with this two option years left, it, this would go to one option year left, and it would say option use this season, yes. I can then send Diaz up and down as many times as I want during that option year. The option, it's not like, I send him down once and that's an option. The next time I send him down, that's an option. If it's all within the same year, it's just using that same option year. So really you get three seasons of um, being able to send players up and down. Um, this is can be really important with bullpen management. If you want fresh arms coming into the bullpen, you want some guys with option years in your bullpen that you can send up and down um, in case you have a tired bullpen um, as the season goes on. Um, the, if a player doesn't have option years left and you want to keep them on the 40 man, you can put them on waivers to send them down. Um, but you know, pretty much what you want to focus on is, um, minor league options. Um, and, and, and do they have option years left? If you need to take people off your active roster to, um, become compliant with the 26 man opening day roster. Um, next thing that you're going to pay attention to is rule five status. If you look here, here's a minor league. Here's my AAA team. Um, Brandon Bilek, he has this pound sign or hashtag, if you want to call it, um, next to his name. That means he's eligible for the rule five draft. The rule five draft happens in December. So, um, and other teams can select players of yours that are eligible, um, in the rule five draft that you don't have protected. So if I want to protect Bilek, um, I'm going to need to do so before the rule five draft in December. And the way you do that is you put the player on your 40 man roster. If a player is on your 40 man roster, they are protected from the rule five draft. Um, you know, you can see some guys here, um, maybe not at this level, but let's go down to like here. There are plenty of minor leaguers. See, these guys are not on my 40 man, but are not, um, yet eligible. As you see, there are some players here with the little pound sign that are eligible. Um, so you're going you're gonna to want to, before the Rule 5 draft at some point during the offseason, add guys to your 40-man that you want to protect. Um, and you can always go into a player's contract um, and see Rule 5 eligibility, eligible, times professional is how that's determined. And again, I'd, I'd uh, encourage you to check the Out of the Park manual on that, but basically how it works is um, if a player was 19 or older when he came into professional ball um, and has more than three years of professional experience and is not on the 40-man, he's eligible. If he was 18 or younger when he came into professional ball um, and is not on the 40 man after he has four or more years experience as professional, then he's eligible for the rule five. Um, but you can, you can basically just use it um, looking at this uh, pound sign. If you want to understand the nuance, though, those are the kind of rules of when a player is going to be eligible. Um, the last thing to keep in mind for roster rules and roster management is a way that you can get an extra year of team control for a player. So let's look at my, um, contracts page here, my salaries. Um, and so you'll see guys have these auto renewing deals, right? So Connor Jones right here, 564, he's going to auto renew. Uh, and that's his, so you get three years of auto renewing at the league minimum at the 564 when you add a guy to your 40 man roster. 
And then, so, and there is some nuance to this, so I'm just going to speak in generalities, but you get three years of the auto renewal and then three years of arbitration. Um, and then the player is eligible for free agency after those six years of team control. But there is one way you can gain an extra year of team control, um, and it, it, which is an extra year of arbitration. And you've seen this in the major leagues. You see it with a guy like Chris Bryant. The Cubs held him down at the beginning of the season um, in order to get that extra year of arbitration. Be um, if a player um, a player has to be on the major league roster for a certain number of days to get a year of service time for that year. And it's generally about 14 days into the season, 14 to 21 days, that if a player is still down in the minors, uh, he's not going to get a year of service for that year. So Chris Bryant, the Cubs held him down for two to three weeks or however long it was. Um, and so they brought him up in April, but he didn't get the credit of the year of service time. Um and why is this an advantage? You can see a guy like Mount Castle here. I did this with. And so he's got a couple more years of auto renewal left. And then arbitration, he has four years of arbitration. Um, <clears throat> if I had not kept him down for the first two to three weeks of the season, this year would be a free agency year. He would not be arbitration eligible. So it's just a way you can kind of get an extra year of team control. Um, especially if you're a rebuilding team like I was with the O's here, it's helpful. If you're competing and you've got a rookie that you want up and every win's going to count and you're gunning for the playoffs, maybe don't do it. Um, you know, I, I didn't do it with this guy, Durbin Feltman here. You can see he's on auto renewal and then, oh wait, maybe I did actually. He's got four years of arbitration. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something to consider if you have a prospect, wait a couple weeks into the season to bring him up, uh, to the 26 man and and you'll get an extra year of team control um through a fourth arbitration year um so those are just kind of some basic basic things option years rule five extra year of team control that are important to uh kind of get a grasp on as you learn to play the game thanks